Week 16 is here. We are in the semifinals of the fantasy football playoffs, and you've probably come here for me to get you to the championship weekend. And unfortunately for you, that's 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 probably not the best idea for you. Kidding, unless I don't know the way the way this season is going. I'm starting to slowly realize the way I see myself as a fantasy expert is Gabe Davis. That's that's my player comp amongst fantasy experts. I'm either gonna not miss. I'm going to be flawless. I'm going to be doing things you didn't know I could do, putting up crazy numbers in just one half, or I'm going to curl up in a ball and disappear because I'm putting up duds. I'm putting up zeros. I'm doing nothing. We'll see. That could be good for you. could be bad for you. Depends which day of the week. Depends how I'm feeling this week. We'll see. Take your 50-50 shot on me. Let's ride. Speaking of Gabe Davis, today we're talking about the top 35 wide receivers, the top 30 running backs. And week 16 is crazy. We got injuries. We got Saturday games. We got fucking Aaron Rodgers maybe coming back, maybe never coming back. Coaches getting fired. Guys breaking their legs, whatever. So with that said, if something in this video doesn't add up to a news report or an injury report that came out, that is probably because I made this video beforehand. So to find my response into that brand new injury report, you could find the updated rankings to the exact millisecond a injury or some breaking news happens on bdge.co. You can find the updated rankings and the full rankings. You can find wide receivers 1 through 100. You can see my kicker rankings, my quarterback rankings, tight end rankings, whatever you want to see. It's on there, bdge.co, for the most updated shit you can find. Let's get into it. Today, I'm going to start with wide receivers first. I don't know why. Maybe it's the Christmas spirit in the air. I usually start with running backs, but we're starting with wide receivers first. I don't need to babysit you on the top, guys. Stephon Diggs, though, I'm not going to tell you to sit Stephon Diggs, okay? And you can't sit Stephon Diggs. I know it's been annoying. I know it's been frustrating. Very, very favorable matchup. He's facing corners that are like seventh round and undrafted guys. Like, just trust. Just trust. He will maybe, hopefully, turn around this week so you have some life in the fantasy playoffs. Uh, the 49ers boys, they have a tough matchup. The Ravens give up the eighth fewest fantasy points to wide receivers and bdg myself is a friend of 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 marlon humphrey so i'm kind of pulling for the ravens all right and i i'm i know what they're about but i don't know if they know what the niners boys are about debo has been on one for the past five weeks the past five games debo's the wide receiver one and Brandon Ayuk, he's the wide receiver seven so these guys are clear cut and obvious wide receiver ones michael pittman I don't know if he's going to play. He he straight up got murked. He did have limited practice on Wednesday. Regardless, if he plays, he's a must start, even though Atlanta has an underrated defense. Michael Pittman's a wide receiver 12 on the year, and I think he's going to finish the season leading in target. So if he plays, you play him. Simple enough. Jalen Waddell, I don't really know what's going to happen with Tyreek Hill. With Hill or not, he's still in that same range. Fringe wide receiver one. He popped off in week 15, the first week of the fantasy playoffs, put up 100 yards, had a big broken play. I don't, not a broken play. He just beat a guy bad. Credit to Waddle. Put up 100 yards, put up a tutty, put up the numbers you wanted, and the reason you drafted Waddle paid off in the fantasy playoffs. So logically, my brain is telling me you have to start him regardless. Could be a positive game script. Could be a high-octane offensive game going back and forth. Could, maybe, we'll see. But my heart, my gut, my vibes, it feels a Waddle letdown. Sorry. Sorry to end it like that. My brain, my logic says he's obviously a must-start, but my vibes are telling me otherwise. A guy I want to go in depth on, Rashi Rice. This is one of my favorite. He's slowly become one of my favorite players in the NFL. If you guys have been watching me the past few weeks, and if you watch me in the Tuesday videos with Nick, we did a playoff winner prediction a few weeks ago, and Rashi Rice was my guy. I predicted him to be a playoff league winner, and he's been popping off four straight games. He's averaging 16.35 fantasy points. We'll take that. He's not just getting double digits. He's getting us into the teens. And I have him in that wide receiver 15, 16 range because I've been bullish on him. I'm still bullish on him. But all of a sudden, the ECR is getting a little freaking crazy up in here. They have him as the wide receiver 12. It's really not a big difference. It, it doesn't matter in hindsight. But I thought I was the one that's early and ahead on Rashi Rice. And all of a sudden, I'm low on him. I'm not cool with it. I'm not cool with it. Also, outside of the basic box score numbers, outside of the Final Fantasy numbers you guys are looking at, when it comes to the snap percentages, Rashi Rice, five straight games, his snaps have gone up, and that's what we needed to see to see is there a clear-cut wide receiver one of the Chiefs offense, and Rashi is finally stepping in that role. Last week, he had 93% of the snaps. The week before, he saw 85% of the snaps. That's back-to-back -back season highs because all season long before the last two weeks, he didn't have a single game above 70% of the snaps. So he didn't just linearly grow. He took an exponential step and that's what we like to see especially this time of the year when it matters most Devontae Adams same thing every single week all right even even coming off a 63 point game elite wide receiver questionable quarterback play 
Maybe Jacoby Myers will step in and throw him another one. It's Devontae. You're going to play him. Uh, I didn't realize I went out of order there, but sorry. Calvin Ridley. It feels gross. It feels gross putting him in this, not just like wide receiver two range, like strong wide receiver two range. Like the, the spot I have Calvin Ridley says he's a must start. I feel like I put my neck out on the line, my name on the line for Calvin a lot all year and it hasn't paid off a whole lot, but fuck it. We're consistent. Calvin Ridley, without Christian Kirk, has seen 11 in 12 target games that's checking off one of the boxes of what we want to see he's a volume king and i know he's been disappointing but i really think on sunday i think it was sunday night football Calvin really catches that touchdown that is very controversial and i don't even give a shit which way you see it we're not questioning him anymore and we're all saying he's a wide receiver too and therefore i can't just give him that for the benefit of the doubt but the volume is there the play was there shit just went the wrong way i think if luck bounces in our favor this time calvin really is going to be a top 20 wide receiver like i said the volume is there the potential is there in the matchup is there they face the bucks this week who has swiss cheese at first secondary jags have been on a four game skid or i think a three game losing streaks three game skid but the bucks give up the fourth most fantasy points to wide receivers calvin don't do me dirty don't do me dirty garrett wilson Last week was unfortunate. I think he put up like three catches for like 29 yards. It was, it was somewhere around there. It was like three catches and tw 20 and some change. Ugly. You got about four points in the fantasy playoffs. But now he gets to face the commanders who is dog shit. You saw last week they just left Cooper Cup wide open. Now is that Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup? That's probably not going to happen with whoever, whoever the fuck's starting. Trevor Simeon and Garrett Wilson or concussion Zach Wilson and Garrett Wilson. Probably not. But Wilson is fifth in targets. Kind of like Ridley. The volume is there. Obviously he doesn't have the quarterback play to back him up. But favorable matchup, Garrett Wilson, I, I don't mind starting him. I, I think he's worth a wide receiver two spot. T. Higgins, he's a top 20 wide receiver with Jamar Chase separating his shoulder, with him not playing, and with T. Higgins' recent performance. The dude got two tutties. Unfortunately for a lot of you, T. Higgins might be the reason you never made the fantasy playoffs, so it didn't even matter. But for the few that made the playoffs and then somehow still have him on your team, you probably didn't even start him, whatever. In recent performance, he's him. And opportunity-wise, he's him. Jamar Chase is out. The Steelers do have an underrated top seven pass defense, but Demonte Casey's out, so that's good news. We will know T. Higgins will leave this game alive. That's a plus. That's a bonus. We'll take that. That's a small win because that matters. All around, still a pretty solid secondary. Jake Browning might be him, though. Top 20 wide receivers the way I see it. Amari Cooper, hang. I've been liking Amari. 22 targets in the last two games. I've been liking Joe Flacco, and he killed it in the first week of the fantasy playoffs. I will say, I'm not going to get into whether or not I know how defenses work, okay? I'm not going to act like I know if Derek Stingley's going to play the left side, the right side, if he's going to shadow, is he going to play in the slot, is he going to play man, is he going to play zone? But Derek Stingley's been on one. Just, I'm just throwing out a little small prediction of he might be locking up Cooper. I'm not going to not gonna cement it, and that's why he's still top 21 play, but some foreshadowing. DeAndre Hopkins. Look, man, D-Hop, I've been talking about the ECR because I've been relatively close in a lot of the other wide receivers but dhop i guess i disagree with the ecr very heavily i have him in this fringe wide receiver two range i think that's perfect for dhop ecr has him as a top 18 wide receiver solidified again not a big difference maker but that's a tier difference to me like it, it, it's just a difference i think rashi rice and mari cooper are in very different tiers even though they're five spots ahead i'm very much more so comfortable starting rashi rice or cooper and the same thing goes for d hopping in the wide receiver 24 or top 18 wide receiver he's coming off a three-point game like what are we doing three points and you're still saying he's an eight top 18 wide receiver i know i'm contradicting myself because of garrett wilson but d hop three points still worth a flex play and the seahawks do give up the six most fantasy points to wide receivers since week eight but it's just levis man i i love the dude I'm really rooting for him, but I can't bank on him. And I'm, like, not even trying to diss him. I, I, I have D-Hop as a startable wide receiver, but the ECR is pissing me off. Nico Collins, functional, but a boomer bust wide receiver. Case Keenum allowed Noah Brown to go 8 for 80. I think it's kind of oversimplifying to just plug and play and say that's the same thing, especially now that they get to, or they have to, not get to, have to face the Cleveland Browns versus the Tennessee Titans. A very different matchup when it comes to secondaries. The Browns are a top five secondary. Tennessee kind of kind of exposable Jaden Reed speaking of the ECR unless Jaden Reed's hurt that I don't know about he is not practicing on Wednesday but if he does play he is a lockdown top 30 wide receiver he's the wide receiver 25 on the season so why wouldn't he be in the top 30 okay we're 15 weeks deep that's a big enough sample size to say hey you're a top 30 wide receiver he scored five touchdowns in his last six games 
Dobbs kind of sucks. Watson's con- going to continue to be out. And while Carolina's kind of got, not even kind of, they have a top three fantasy defense against wide receivers. They hold wide receivers to the third fewest fantasy points. Shout out to them. Jaden Reed's not a traditional wide receiver, though. They use him in end rounds. They use him as a gadget guy. They use him for fun. I like him. Based on all season performance and based on his role, he's top 30. ECR, though, has him like 20 spots lower than I do. Could be because of the injury. Could be because of the ankle. Again, if he's not, if he is out once this video is posted, that's when you go to bdge.co and check how that fluctuates and changes the other guys such as Dobbs, such as Wicks and where the fuck Reed is. If maybe he's like got limited practice, maybe he'll have limited snaps. I don't know. You'll see. You'll see. Go to the website. Chris Godwin. I mean, look, he's coming off his best game of the year. Jags passing defense is bottom 10. The Jags have been on that three game skid. It's really hard for me to not throw him in the top 30 when he's coming off his best game of the year 20 plus fantasy points hella target double digit targets i don't trust his ass but i feel crazy not talking about him terry mclaurin is an interesting one last week i had terry i think between the same exact range i think he was somewhere between wide receiver 30 and 35 and that's where i'm going to keep him all right i'm not swinging the pendulum and going all the way in on terry mclaurin because he had one great game and it could have even been better he got like down on the one yard line where he would have had another score we would have been even higher on him he's worth giving a shot because he has that upside because sammy slings is slinging the rock but we're not we're not getting crazy all year he's been freaking dog shit. him and t higgins are basically doing the same thing right now cost you for making the playoffs and then if you somehow made it you probably didn't even start him because you never even thought about it i guess you can even throw godwin in that role too not to mention last week terry was cooking the same rams corner hella i can't think of his name probably because he sucked but he was cooking his ass and now he has to go face the jets he's not gonna cook dj reed and sauce Gardner like he did that poor rams fella I- i'm just not swinging the pendulum i'm in on him not all in on him drake london very boomer bust surprisingly the colts have a pretty good pass defense they give up the third fewest fantasy points to wide receivers since week eight and their run defense is dog shit it's like bottom five i want to say i think it gives up the fourth most fantasy points to running backs so in my mind that says hey colts have a great pass defense bad run defense that means the falcons should be running the ball with Bijan and algier and probably not throwing it with desmond ritter and drake london that might be getting our that might be giving arthur smith too much credit that might be too simple for him the dudes out there but who knows? Uh, I guess I should talk about the Seahawks guys real quick. I like both of them in the flex, but unfortunately, this Seattle's team, I realize they keep saying unfortunately or but 400 times. I'm just shitting on all the wide receivers. Apparently, there's no one I like. Unfortunately, though, this Seahawks team has a plethora of good weapons, but this offense is not powerful enough like a Niners or like a Dolphins or I don't fucking know who's another good one, a Cowboys where everyone can eat everyone could get some the seahawks they tend to take turns so you know what you're getting into you're taking a little bit of a risk there nick's texting me i don't know if the camera can see this this is this is what nick texts me i'm in the, i'm working here this is what he texts me ridiculous um deontay apparently i'm six spots low on him compared to the ecr look i just don't trust mason rudolph man how could i he hasn't started in like two two and a half years he's gonna eat a decent amount of targets the Bengals are slightly below average when it comes to defense against wide receivers i think they've given up not i think i have the number they've given up the 14th most fantasy points to wide receivers since week eight that's why he's playable all right that's that's why i still have him as a flex option but me being six spots low on him top 30 wide receivers where the ecr has him i'm good he's not a faux show top 30 guy on to the next one on to the running backs before i get to the running backs remember if anything i just said about the wide receivers isn't adding up to whatever injury report you just saw friday night saturday morning saturday night sunday morning check bdge.co for my updated response because this video can't update but the website can update with how things are being affected how things are changing hang running backs i know it looks gross putting gibbs at rb2 but the dude's him. He put up over 100 yards last week. I think he had two touchdowns. And, you know, if, if I'm giving full context, he's not really RB2. I think he's RB. he is RB4. Kyron's RB2 and Kamar's RB3, but they play on Thursday Night Football. This video's coming out after Thursday Night Football. So, yeah, Gibbs goes up two spots. You get it. Hang. Uh, both of the Lions running backs, though, very strong RB1s, in my opinion, even against a Vikings tough run defense. Monty is still out snapping and having more rushing attempts and has more rushing attempts than Jameer Gibbs which is good for Monty owners but Gibbs is just so explosive that I think he gets the gun on him he gets the jump on him and that's very good news for Gibbs owners and if you have both I'm not I'm not afraid I'm not afraid start him Raheem Moster RB3 he's just got like the strongest floor in all of fantasy football outside of obviously like CMC A-Chain's gonna maybe get some like explosive work and we can even throw him in there as well I'll talk about him, but Mostert, he's 20 touchdowns on the year, strongest floor. What are we doing? 
Don't overthink it. A chain. I think he's still a fringe RB1. Look, he could be disappointing and maybe slip outside the top 25 and only get you nine fantasy points. But if like that's the worst come, worst serve scenario, we'll take that. Nine points as like worst possible option. We'll take that. And when he has the potential to be the literal RB1, we'll take that. Throw him smack dab in the middle, RB15 on the week. James Cook, he's the RB5 on the year. Charters have lost all life. Like, come on, he might get two touchdowns again. A guy I probably should talk about being in the top seven for no reason, but I did it anyways, Brees Hall. He's been ass lately, okay? When it comes to the rushing game, he's been ass. Nine straight games, nine. That's not like, you know, one's a mistake, two's a coincidence, three's a pattern. We're on nine. It's just nine is nine is who you are. It's no pattern coincidence. It's just you suck. Possibly. We'll see. Nine straight games, not a single game, over 50 rushing yards. But I still have has a top seven back because of his receiving floor on the year. He's third in receptions. All right. It's weird putting him in that like CMC Kamara bracket. That's that's where the numbers put us in Washington is dog shit in the run game. Ever since he got rid of Sweat and uh, Chase, uh, Chase Young, they've been ass. Since week eight, they've given up the fourth most fantasy points, the sixth most yards per carry, and the sixth most rushing touchdowns. Brees, Brees, do me a solid, man. I'm putting my name on the line for you. Step the fuck up. Jacobs, J- Jonathan Taylor, Isaiah Pacheco, if they, all they, if they all play, they're all dealing with different bullshit. I don't want to go into the injuries on all of them. If they all play, they're all very startable. I think that's very understandable. If you're watching this video, you know a little bit of fantasy football. If Jonathan Taylor plays, he's startable, and same for the others. If they don't, That's where you should check the rankings, bdge.co, to find how that fluctuates the other guys. Where does Clyde Edwards-Alaire go now? Where does McKinnon go now? Where's Trey Sermon? Where's Amir White? Where's Amir Adula? I can't even say their names. Kenneth Walker, he's back in a sense, cooked the Eagles, but now he's got a shoulder injury. He's very fragile. Him him and A-Chain both, like great running backs, great fantasy options, but they're soft. They're, They're a little fragile. I don't, I don't know if the defense is they don't like him. Like, would it kill him to just tackle them softer? I don't know. Either way, Walker, if he plays, Tennessee's given up the 11th most fantasy points to running backs since week eight. He's playable. Obviously, to be honest, I think the Seahawks offense might be functioning a little bit better if they had Drew Locke. But even with Smith, they should win this game and Walker should probably get in the end zone. Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard, I am 10 spots lower on than the ECR. I'm going to rant about Tony Pollard for a minute. And this video is getting a little long, but I don't care. This is Here's the logical stat you need to know to preface with the Dolphins give up the fifth fewest fantasy points to running backs since week eight so in the second half of the season the Dolphins they shut it down they shut the run game down that's what you need to know and that's why I'm low on them again have them at RB18 ECR has them at RB RB9 there are a few guys in fantasy football I think I just have a very strong understanding about my gut my intuition I just think I know you I know you you look in the mirror you see me because I know you now, I'm not acting like I'm a perfect guy. There's a lot of guys I don't know. I've missed on Zach Moss the past two, three months in a row. Shamar Chase, I couldn't really get him right with the Jake Browning situation. I kept missing, flopping, going back and forth. Tony Pollard, though, I'm sticking my foot down on this one. I know Tony Pollard, and this is a week he's going to disappoint. Still a top 18 back, but this week, he ain't, he ain't no faux show top 10 like the ECR says. Ty Chandler, I had Ty Chandler as like a flex play. You know, still a startable guy. Like, I think it was like RB27. But Nick's like, no, he's got to be higher. He's got to be a must-start RB2. I'm like, tight Lions, excuse me, they play the Lions. The Lions have a top five run defense. So, I mean, I, I don't want to just say he's a must-start RB2, but when the boss man speaks, you know, the, the guy that's probably won a lot more fantasy championships than me, done, been doing fantasy a lot more than me, fine, bump him up. Austin Eckler, gross. If you're looking at me right now and you're wondering who do I start this week, Eckler or some random ass guy in the flex like Cortland Sutton, Trey McBride, fucking Zamir White, don't. That's on you. You drafted him. That's on you. All right. Not to throw the blame, but I'm throwing the blame. I don't want to deal with it. I didn't draft him for a reason. So that's on you. If you want to know my analysis on him, he's the RB23 this week. And if you go to bdg.co, you can see exactly where he is compared to wide receivers in the flex ranking. That's that's all I'm going to say. I don't want to talk about him, so I'm not. Zeke. I like Zeke. I have him as a startable player. I God, I'm starting to realize I just shit on guys in my fantasy rankings, don't I? Either way. I, I don't even mean to. It's just like I feel like I have a good like understanding of where these guys should be in the ECR. It's just like, no, nah, you're way too low. I have Zeke as an RB2. That feels respectable. ECR says I'm nine spots low on him, and he should be an RB17. 
the 17th running back, 17th best. That's a little rich for me, all right? Even though Denver has a bad defense all season long, they've given up the fourth most fantasy points in the past, like, six weeks. They've improved. They've gone from, like, the worst to the eighth worst. Still not great, but better, if you want to say that. My analysis is that the fact that the Patriots are still dog shit, all right? Did we forget? Like, yeah, they had a nice win over the Steelers. Did we forget? They're still one of the worst teams in the NFL. That's why I'm taxing Zeke a little bit. I, I just can't say he's a must-start RB2. He's fringe. Uh, Gibson startable. B-Rob has not been practicing still. So Gibson versus the Jets out the backfield. Probably going to get a couple receptions. The Steelers running backs. I'm putting Warren over Najee. Najee's not in the top 30. I think he's like 33. Yeah, Najee's RB33. So I just threw him behind Warren because you're going to have questions about him. I like Warren over Najee. They're both kind of gross. All right. If we want to we want to be serious and address the elephant in the room, both these guys have sucked ass since Matt, Matt Canada has left. Last week, Warren outsnapped Najee a shit ton, the most all season. He saw a 70 to 30% ratio. 70% Warren, 30% Najee. Previous weeks, all season long, it was about 50 50 or even 60 40 in Najee's favor. Now it's completely flopped and Warren's up on top. Could have been because of the game script. They were trailing. Warren's the receiving back. Could have been because Najee fumbled. Could have been this. Could have been that. Either way, numbers don't lie. And the numbers are saying transitions are occurring. Singletary, he cooked last week. Pierce is dead. Brown's got a top five run defense. That's your answer. Good flex play. Not a must start. Gus Edwards, he's going to score a touchdown. All right. I'm calling it. I'm confident. I called it last week. And this isn't victory lapping because I've called plenty of things and missed. But Gus is going to score without Keith Mitchell. Even though the Niners are a good team, he's scoring a touchdown. He's getting in the end zone. He's fucking useless if he doesn't, but he's gonna, so don't worry. Jerome Ford, I don't want to talk about him, but I feel like a lot of you out there own him, so so I'll talk about him. I don't think he's very good. I think his ceiling is 15 points. Like, I think that's the most we could get out of Jerome Ford. I have him as the RB35 on the week. He only gets like 50% of the work, and Houston's run defense just made Derrick Henry look like he should call it a career. Like, straight up call it quits, like brother what are you doing why are you playing anymore bro it's not like it's oversimplifying to say like oh what now what do you think they're going to do to Jerome Ford but what do you think they're going to do to Jerome Ford even though Derrick Henry's not the same Jerome Ford even ain't even 50 percent of 50 percent Derrick Henry so I don't, I don't want to play him unless you have to go for it I'm not all right speaking of Derrick Henry calling it quits and the Texas making them that's that's my time I'm calling it quits I'm out that is your week 16 rankings. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. As always, and of course, thank you and good night. Thanks.